Hmm. Okay. Back to uh, this thing. So one pizza delivery individual in uh, Delhi was affected and because of the 72 people have been quarantined and all of that. Uh, so that is one part. And second part about this is also the, <clears throat> you know, we, we first of all, we don't know the back end. And uh, the other is the, uh, which is of course common for in store uh, also is uh, this whole science is now, uh, you know, even now, not very clear, you know, how long the virus will survive on a surface, right? So we are hearing updated information that, you know, if it is metal, it can stay for days, you know, newspaper, it doesn't, you know, cardboard box, it uh, is there for two hours. Sometimes we hear it is six hours. So even if we take delivery at home, uh, you know, we are essentially bringing in the uh, you know, there is a possibility that the virus will be entering our home, right? So, uh, uh, so, the, uh, so retail will be a very, uh, you know, significant play out in the coming days. And you, you see that seriousness, you know, all the discussions, all the government notifications, all the guidelines, you know, retail is at this point of time, very, very prominent uh, as to what should happen uh, for this uh, uh, segment, right? Uh, so I'll uh, sort of, uh, I'll move, move on, uh, you know, I will, uh, you know, we have so far seen a broad picture of how the, uh, you know, world is evolving. We looked at the overall economic uh, issues uh, that uh, we foresee yeah, or already are uh, feeling. We also have seen the, um, you know, the, uh, the education sector right, in some detail. And today we are getting into this retail and e-commerce, uh, you know, for simplicity, let's call it uh, retail sector. And uh, what I have done is unlike the uh, previous ones, you know, I have not really put any numbers here, you know, the, though, you know, just for the sake of uh, some reference, I just wanted to tell that uh, there are estimates, you know, in Indian retail segment is uh, considered to be something like a I think around 700 to 800 billion dollars. It's sort of, uh, it, uh, you know, it was uh, 500 odd billion dollar a couple of years back and had been seeing a steady growth. A uh, lot of it is, uh, you know, the growth has happened because of obviously the e-commerce players, which has helped, uh, you know, penetrate the tier two and tier three markets for goods, which was previously not available to them. And uh, the segment, uh, you know, maybe around 10, 12 percent is the, or maybe 15 percent is the organized uh, segment, the large retail malls or grocery stores or chains or e-commerce, but 85 percent is still very fragmented. And it's sort of, uh, you know, it is probably after the transport sector, it's the highest employer, uh, you know, of course, agriculture and then transport and then and uh, why I say transport, transport is much more than, you know, drivers and, you know, transport sector is, uh, you know, includes people who are building roads and all of that. So it's a huge sector. But then after that, the third largest employer in the country is mm -hmm. the uh, retail uh, segment. There are approximately uh, 8 million or 80 lakhs, you know, retail Kirana shops in the country, right? Uh, so, so it is very, also very important from the perspective of the, you know, the livelihood of the people who are getting affected. One is the consumer, but the people who are providing the service also, there is a huge number of people are dependent on this sector, right? Uh, and now, uh, so there are a few things uh, uh, I just wanted to, and this is known to everybody. Uh, so today uh, I'm not presenting a lot of numbers in terms of, you know, how much and this and that, which you have seen before, but more of looking as to what are the sort of thought process that are going on. Uh, so uh, today we know that, you know, essential business, non-essential retail is closed. A very small amount of, you know, uh, retail is uh, allowed. What is one is grocery and the other one is uh, pharma. And so only those things also are allowed to be uh, delivered at home, you know, and that also is restricted in certain cities. Uh, we saw a lot of panic buying uh, across the world uh, where people sort of people uh, you know uh, when this uh, lockdowns were imminent people went ahead and 
tried to store a lot of things uh, in their homes and we have seen a significant amount of uh, buying spree uh, and that continues for you know one is the uh, the day-to-day uh, -day essentials like groceries uh, second is the healthcare products medicines and you know all the sort of emergency healthcare products and uh, you know masks uh, sanitizers uh, all of that and uh, third is of course the third is uh, the healthcare products and the uh, personal uh, sanitation right uh, so these are the three things uh, you know tissue paper uh, you know we have seen literally ran out of you know shelves became empty people start fighting and all of that and uh, apart from this you know though uh, nothing uh, you know and and whoever could uh, supply those uh, online you know uh, uh, either through intermediaries like, uh, you know, uh, uh, for groceries, say for, uh, for example, Big Basket uh, or for other things, uh, Reliance Pantry uh, or uh, medi medi medicine through the intermediaries. Uh, you know, the movement that has happened so far in terms of purchasing has broadly remained only these three categories. That is a grocery, uh, second is your uh, uh, medicines, healthcare products, and third is the personal hygiene products. Uh, and significant amount of that has moved from uh, in store to uh, online. Uh, that that has the uh, uh, you know change which you have seen so far. What will happen tomorrow after the uh, whole thing is over, and hopefully it will be over in some near term. Uh, that one is that you know we have now changed in many ways. Uh, the way we buy, you know, way we consume, um, and it is a, it is failed that you know if it continues for a reasonably long time, some of these changes may stay. For example, you know, right now, mm -hmm. uh, you know, we are not buying for a long time, uh, you know, electronic goods, right? Uh, and uh, we are just doing fine. Right, and there is nothing. Uh, you know, we we have found out that most of us had enough and more, uh, which we needed. We don't have to, you know, buy a new phone every year or every six months. Which many people will otherwise do, right? So, so maybe you know, some of these changes will, or uh, you know, moving uh, to a lot of people have moved to, for example, online shopping. They are previously worried about, uh, you know, paying online or whether the right stuff will be coming or you know what is the security or lack of security if somebody knocks the door but now they have got accustomed and they have found it is very convenient right so some of these behaviors may change uh, stay what are those behaviors and how long it will take to make fundamental shift we we don't know second is clearly everybody will look at their discretionary spend uh, everybody so so we, uh, whatever is the retail, and there is a small segment, we'll see, you know, the whatever in the retail segment, at least what is high fashion, expensive good, uh, consumer electronics, which is not necessarily something which you need, uh, maybe obviously automobiles and definitely high-end automobiles. Uh, there will be uh, uh, a sustained drop in demand for time to come because one is people have suffered uh, income loss and second is since the uncertainty is there people like to save money for whatever uncertain terms right uh, so that will also uh, drive and third is uh, because of this fall you know in certain retail segments for sure you know the malls will be under pressure you know high end retail shops will be under pressure big brands will be you know mm -hmm. high end brands will be under pressure uh, it is expected that you know there will be a shakeout in the industry. There will be, uh, uh, you know, the two things will happen. One is the pe the people who will be struggling will be open to buyout and consolidation, uh, which is one outcome always happens. The other is that we'll also see a lot of innovations by the retail players to see how they can still be in business with the constraint of, you know, the behavior change. Uh, low discretionary spend and of course the social distancing which is now the given you know for some uh, for a long time to come and we may see a lot of innovation we talk about some of the innovations which are already there and what more can happen uh, here I have just uh, put you know 
the segments, uh, you know, which uh, are seeing, uh, you know, first, uh, first, uh, uh, first three in the segments which are seeing upswing, which you talked about, the grocery commerce, other e-commerce is of course, uh, uh, you know, from the e-commerce perspective, the online. Sorry, these are three segments on the online which which we are uh, uh, seeing some trends. Groceries, of course, there's upswing. Uh, the likes of Big Basket, as I told. Uh, you know, they have seen uh, almost three times the demand, right? Other e-commerce uh, has not picked up uh, the shops. Uh, the Anyway, there is no delivery uh, because they are not essential. But there had been a significant improvement in the subscription services. So people have, you know, subscribed to online yoga, online uh, gym, uh, online uh, entertainment, uh, music, uh, streaming music. So there uh, is another uh, area where there seem to be a significant upstream. And then again, you know, this will again uh, drive some of the uh, behaviors going forward because people have now started, you know, a lot of other ways of uh, engaging themselves, right? You know, people have started learning, uh, you know, studying, for example, how to use, how to uh, uh, do online study. Uh, people are learning how to play music online, how to collaborate, you know, how to connect with family and also uh, let's also understand entertainment is always a piece of our time which is free from uh, after we do our, you know, uh, living, right? So if some of these things continue to stay, you know, families, friends, connects once in a month or whatever, you know, these will uh, slowly eat away some of the other entertainments which we previously was uh, focused on like instead of going to movie every month maybe people will now say that okay we'll have a family get together online uh, once in two months and we'll go to movie once in two months these sort of changes may happen because these are also very very fulfilling experiences for us right now and from the perspective of the categories you know we talked about health safety products uh, self uh, shelf stable uh, goods uh, stuff which stay for a long time like processed milk, cheese and all, we have all sort of bought food and beverage uh, as much as possible, cereals and you know, the pulses is something which everybody has talked enough. Digital streaming, we talked about that it has gone up, but what has definitely seen a downtrend and that will continue is luxury goods, fashion, and apparel. And you know, there are certain companies are talking about their upwards of billions of dollars of loss. Uh, this year and then we'll probably see some amount of consolidation the first wave of consolidation may happen in that segment because you know it will be years before you know people will start buying luxury goods which is absolutely discretionary spend and super rich will not buy it for two reasons one is that they are also not sure about their liability because everybody has businesses where you know the, they are responsible for the people second is of course the world also will probably uh, not appreciate people doing, uh, you know, spending in a big way uh, when the, you know, the whole whole society is in a way struggling. Now, if you look at uh, the, uh, you know, the places which are close to us, uh, which is the retail, which you normally see, which I put up, you know, the corner shops and service, the Kirana shops, uh, you know, these ready-made garments, pharmacy, bookshop, maybe bookshop is not something else, uh, you know, will go much canteen, restaurant, tea stall, snacks, uh, catering, laundry. Now, if you look at almost all of them are the retail uh, services which will need, you know, which is not discretion. It may not be as necessary as, you know, uh, food and grocery, uh, but uh, we cannot do without, you know, saloon, for example, or mobile uh, repair shops or you know, uh, laundry or catering or, you know, canteen restaurants and tea stall and all that for a long time. As the economy will open up, these are the areas how they are going to uh, manage will be a question. And I don't have an answer and I am a little concerned personally that, you know, the government of India so far has been talking about which segment to open and which is not to be open. But there is no comprehensive guideline to any of the industries to tell how they should open. For example, if you say that, you know, I will be opening my, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, retail segment tomorrow, right? Uh, grocery store, you know, physical grocery store. You know, I went to my 
grocery store and you know they have put their own uh, guidelines that you know please wear a mask and only you know 10 people can go in right but i think that these these sort of things has to be now uh, clearly spelled out because it is not about just cleaning up the airport but every place where anybody is there or there is a crowd and it is open we have to have some level of uh, you know discipline everywhere right and uh, and this will be very 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 complex because please understand that as we do social distancing it adds to a lot of cost it is a cost of waiting for the consumer it is a cost of uh, you know for the service provider you know they are uh, uh, you know if it is a saloon and you can you cannot ask people to sit and wait and say that come back you know obviously you know they will have less customers right so so the cost of that services will go up at the same time you know as a consumer i'll be paying both in terms of money as well as added time right but you know we'll probably pay uh, that because it is important for my health but then we'll make a, a readjustment of uh, you know my disposable income what i want to spend and among that what is the priority right so i may not be going to uh, a roadside restaurant for next few months but i will probably go to a laundry and hair saloon and may give 25% premium because i want the safety right now but how it will pan out and all that is an open question and i am just putting it as a question because of course i also don't have answers but this is a forum where we should think and i think that a lot of this will actually have implication for us also especially the students who are going to enter the you know industry going forward uh i have just taken some examples of the innovations people who are trying to do and this is in retail we have all been exposed to this zero contact delivery uh, which the e-commerce people are doing if you go to a swiggy now you know, like the middle and the right uh, screenshot is from swiggy they are saying you know we are having uh, restaurants which are uh, practicing safe uh, delivery you know temperature is being taken every hour for the delivery boys they are having you know masks uh, then there is how they are cooking how they are isolating you know they are talking about all these but then these are very uh, isolated individual uh, efforts and hopefully they are real efforts they are not just something they are saying just to make people feel uh, 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 you know safe now this is where i will come back that this the time has come for the government to uh, really come up with guidelines and maybe you know do some uh, time to time a compliance check to ensure that the guidelines are followed and obviously the guidelines and the compliance will have a cost which as end customers we have to bear and that will see many in this stress to continue and expand in many other segments which are not uh, you know uh, priority for me but that is fine i mean that is a cost we have to bear uh, as a nation of other matter across the world and there uh, there it has to be a transparent system it should not become another license raj or labor commissioner model that they will just go and take money and you know say you are good you are bad ugly then the whole system will collapse and that is extremely difficult in the india context i have taken some other uh, examples which are already there uh, which uh, many retail companies you know the larger retail companies have been using uh this is lens cut you know if you want to buy a lens cut now uh, uh, you can go to their site you can pick up any lens and you can take a photo of yours through the webcam and see how you look uh, when you put on the particular lens and you can make a choice and in fact you sort of almost make an infinite number of uh, options and you can uh, buy something right in same way if you uh, look at dell dell is the first one probably to came up with this model many years back that you know you can design uh, your products right that you can choose what is the hardware what is the you know uh, what is the sort of motherboard you want what is the chip you want uh, what is the sort of uh, storage uh, you want how how does it should look what is the form factor and all that now dell has perfected others have used and this is largely still today if uh, you know it is there for Uh, laptops and desktops right so now if you order a dell you most of the time at least in us and all nobody goes to a shop to buy a dell 
Now, will you see that you know going forward, we'll find similar things happening for mobile phones and other electronic devices? I don't know. Maybe if people stop going to shops and they want to sell, uh, they may uh, you know try to uh, consume electronics. Companies may try to give such options, especially where there are people have to you know decide between you know what should be my camera or what should be my RAM and stuff like that. Uh, same way, uh, you know, this is something fashion apparel, you have this magic mirror, which, which in fact, in, when I was in Infosys, we developed it on 15 years back, at least 10, 10 15 years back, uh, but we don't see it, I have not seen it in India, but it is there in certain stores in the US where you can, you know, just go and uh, stand in front of a mirror and then make a choice of clothes and it uh, digitally superimposes the uh, clothes on you, not I don't know whether you can do it sitting at home, but I think it is just like lens card. If you can, uh, you know, you can buy at a sitting at home uh, and then probably you will say that, you know, I need some delivery where it has to be disinfected and put in some wrapper, which is seen as uh, a proven as resistant to Corona and then uh, you buy it, right? Again, as I say, you know, it will obviously uh, take away the pleasure of going and, you know, shopping is also a social experience, right? Uh, so some of this pleasure will be gone, maybe the delivery and all will cost you more. But then uh, this is something, you know, the apparel and fashion industry may try uh, to do in a big way. Uh, but then again, uh, the roadside shops cannot do that, right? So we don't have a solution for that. If, a large mall can do it and it can be a shared resource across the mall because not everybody can have an expensive solution like this uh, but uh, it can be done so uh, uh, you know this is the nike who who nike's eye design where you can actually pick up your own shoe you know you can look at how to put the logo what sort of eyelets you want to have what sort of sole you want to have of course you have to know your size and then you can actually what color and it gets delivered home um, um, they, you know, so I, 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 there are many, many uh, solutions uh, which are already there where you can bring the uh, the digital, uh, the shop, you know, we, we, even if you look at uh, when it comes to buying houses, right, a lot of people, at least for rental now, uh, you, you have this uh, 99 acres, you know, will give you a digital view of the uh, house you want to rent. You can actually walk through the uh, whole uh, uh, house. Uh, as a matter of fact, while I was doing this, I just remembered that even Infosys, we, sorry, even Adamas, we have a, uh, we have some time back done a digital walkthrough for the whole campus. But some way I could not find it today. Uh, I don't know whether the feature is sort of hidden somewhere, but that will probably be a good feature for us to have uh, during this time. Uh, unless we are using extensively saying that, you know, you will take a digital, uh, you know, walkthrough for the university and I will help you while you are going through the counselor can do a voiceover and say, now you have entered, you know, the right side is a management building and this and that, a left management building on the left side. And it may be a very good experience than just taking some questions and call. Now, this is a thought which I just came and then I'll share with the team. Uh, uh, but. But then, you know, it is some, it, it is not physical visit, but it is not completely something which you can't see. You are somewhere in between, right? But then these are the decisions, you know, BMW has something similar where you can design your own car and the car gets shipped anywhere in the world. You know, there are no BMW showrooms in many places in the world, but people have money. So they go online, you can choose the tire, you can choose the color, you can choose a lot of other components and the car gets shipped, car gets uh, assembled, put in a container and deliver to your home, even if you were in a remote, you know, country or location or whatever, right? So they have those sort of things. But these are the sort of things which cannot be done, you know. So I see there are three types of things uh, in the retail and I'll stop here and we will have a discussion. First is that, you know, of course the financial side you have not looked at, you know, they are all broken, they are all small guys. You know, government money will not reach them because many of them, you know, thankfully now because of GST, we have sort of registered 8.2 8 million entities across the country. So most of the entities have a, you know, that's a, that's a blessing that they have identity, but there is still no government policy yet to help the retail guys 
and retail uh, small retail guys of course are in great trouble because they have no customers and they have a large uh, companies who are uh, their uh, debtors and they will be soon be coming under a lot of pressure to pay back and that that's why they need a protection but there are three types of i think i i probably will happen one is the essential ones where we will do a online and offline or four types one is the e-commerce stuff i think we slowly start and we'll see how we can protect ourselves and there will be increasingly more and more steps will come it will be good to have standardization and uh, some sort of regulation second is the essential things which we have to buy medicine grocery which we are non-discretionary we'll continue to do it with a little bit of risk maybe we'll protect ourselves maybe they will have some things like you know over three customers at a time put a mask or sanit you know soap wash your hand going in coming out and all third is the large retailers uh, who will probably come together uh, get some intermediary platforms like which you talked about uh, you know it can be in you know, a service provider who can provide them something equivalent to i uh, i design or nike or something like that or maybe a magic mirror in the malls where everybody can you know by turn go take a in a sort of QR code, scan it and go and check out what dress they can buy in whatever shops and then go back to the shop, buy it. Or or the same thing maybe, uh, you know, I, I don't enter the shop itself but get it delivered but or maybe sitting at home, much better. And fourth is the all this we talked about, you know, there's a, the retail shops which are neither absolute must but uh, at the same time they are not large. It is the canteens, the restaurants, the you know the bookshops the tent house the mobile repair shop so this is the segment where the large number of people who are in retail segment are employed you know uh, you know dependent and uh, they are very low on resources most of them are in very small shops and uh, i think this is the area which you have to really think right now and see how they can survive you know what sort of standard operating procedures they can have and we ourselves can probably create a lot of uh, you know thought thought mechanism for them being you know coming from university which is supposed to be a think tank so i am done i have i know vijit is raising his hand so this is some readings i have put again the left side is a constant original readings and the right one is as i as i added um, we are at uh, you know 5 odd minutes so i'll stop here and stop sharing and hear out other people yeah uh, see i raised hand uh, uh, because of one reason <clears throat> of course the uh, retail portion that you are showing that is that is what probably it is going to turn out and uh, and that is how probably uh, you know, the whole uh, business is going to segment it in fact but one uh, point, uh, as you have uh, very rightly pointed out, and that is uh, you know, government policy in terms of uh, to support the retail uh, players and all. Uh, today, there was a small news. Uh, in fact, uh, it is being accepted by PMO as well uh, that you know almost 5,000 uh, small retail and retail manufacturing unit in India they are under a lot of threat uh, because of the business slowdown and because of the cash flow slowdown they would be requiring investment and because of the fdi uh, chinese are trying to invest into that kind of uh, you know small small retail and small small ritual product manufacturing sector so uh, and uh, they applied to PMO to come out with the PDF to come out with the modification in the FDI so that uh, that kind of investment uh, cannot come and uh, that kind of investment rather can be stopped. And then in fact PMO accepted that this is a this a, uh, this has been proposed by that uh, you know community of that uh, unit and government is also thinking to do that. Uh, I think that COVID is also one kind of situation where uh, you know Chinese is are also trying to expand their business, uh, you know, by the by means of uh, you know this kind of sector, uh, by means of this kind of approach. Uh, whether it is uh, ethical, whether it is unethical, probably that is not a question now. 
so this is what i also want to you know raise uh, in the latest update uh, which uh, is, is widely discussed in india and it is being accepted even by the pmo and ministry of uh, ministry of external affairs and ministry of even the small and medium uh, unit of business that's what i want to just give a hands yeah. up yeah i think the the thought process is also evolving as you rightly said that you know first of the government was thinking how to feed the daily laborers who are no having no food they are on the road and then slowly it will evolve it's not easy you know it it requires a lot of money but yes the retail segment i think uh, at least the real small players you know the things like which we uh, we we are accustomed to and we we are also not today going to much of retail people right we 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 go to malls and all that who are maybe little more stable uh, but actually the roadside food shops right you know if people stop going there uh, what will happen so that's a big thing and it is evolving and that is why i always say that we should also you know think as a university what we can contribute what we can think we should write we should make policies or at least policy influencers and we are doing it of course yeah. <coughs> one of the things also we got to take care of there are two sides to the story one is obviously what we have been discussing for the last few days is the economic side of things right we also need to look at the cultural side of things absolutely because human human beings are very very uh, difficult to change so maybe there will be segments which will survive because purely from the cultural point of view absolutely. which may not make economic sense absolutely absolutely That's something and what you were saying let me tell you the game is going to get far dirtier before it gets better is going to become the wild west because the whole world has given over their economy to china and you yeah, yeah. think that they are going to play ball they are going to be as i mean if you look at our they can shut down our pharma industry in a matter of one day pharma industry 70% of our yeah yeah us for so 70% of our drugs come 70% yes yes there is no ratio yeah yeah so the point is the whole world has to dance to china's tune for the next few years absolutely till they again yeah, that is absolutely we look at their own manufacturing base other sources of uh, raw material it's a long game long haul until that time all of us are going to suffer we so got to be ready for that as well yes uh, subhangshu da just have a look in the other side even the banking industry uh, look at the hsbc One hsbc only it is there yeah only only 0.5% share was invested in hsbc from china because of this 20 15 days of time china has increased their investment china investor has increased their investment to 2.8% and in hsbc share or hdfc share and you can HFC. understand how they are going to get into even the you know financial sector also i think there's a big article the other day na 50 years ago 10 8 of the top 10 banks and the fortune 500 were american would you like to would you like to log in back some of the bloody banks are chinese would you like to log in back no it's okay i have another meeting starting no, no, at okay. 8:45 yeah i think we are yeah, in okay. 10 minutes thank you very yeah. much it is it, i hope it continues to be as